In this video, we will be studying the measurement of money supply. See, there are number of assets which sources money, directly or indirectly. Right? There are in everything in this world is, you know, apart from human beings. The goods and services we buy uh, have some monetary value. So, there are number of assets which serves us money directly and indirectly. The problem is that what to include and what not to include in the money supply. So, economists have conceived of more than one major of money supply. There are three, ma four majors of money supply. M1, M2, M3 and M4. So we will be studying all the measures of money supply. M1 measurement. First we will study the M1 <coughs> measurement. What are the things that are included as a money in your measurement 1? So in measurement 1, your money supply is equal to C plus DD plus your OD. Now M1 is the money measurement, right? C you have currency which includes your notes and paper coins. Right? Then you have DD. It refers to the demand deposits of the people with the commercial banks. These are checkable deposits which can be withdrawn or transferred on demand. See, you have opened a saving account or a salary account might have to be opened in the banks. Right? The bank. The, the account you open in the bank, you deposit some money in that, which is called demand deposit. That is, demand deposit means that is when I see today you have deposited 10,000, you require those 10,000 after 10 days, or you require these 10,000 in one month for 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 rupees. Right? In this way, you require. So, what do you do in order to keep cash with you? You deposit the amount into the bank. You go to the ATM or you have the checks with you. You cut the check and you get the payment or you go to the ATMs. You swipe the ATM in the ATM machine and you get the money from it. So, your demand deposits with the commercial banks are also the part of the money supply. So, it refers to demand deposit of the people with the commercial banks now the last one we have is OD these are the other deposits which include demand deposit with RBI of public financial institution like IDBI, demand deposit with RBI of foreign central banks and that of the foreign government, Depa demand deposit of international financial institutions like IMF and the World Bank. Now the other deposits is the deposit with RBI, the demand deposit with RBI. Now what you have done, the DD is what public deposit in the commercial bank. Now the other deposits are the demand deposit with the central bank by the public financial institution. institutions that is IDBI that is Industrial Development Bank of India example 
I D B I, right? The second writing here. The second we have is demand deposit with RBI of foreign banks. or of foreign government some deposit like some foreign government has deposited money demand deposit with RRBI third is the demand deposit of international financial institutions like your International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Right, your other deposit includes the demand deposit with your RBI. See, DD demand deposit is the what public deposit into the commercial bank. Now, the other deposits are what different parties deposit to the RBI. That is your central bank. And the parties are the public financial institution, the foreign banks or foreign government, or the international financial institutions like your IMF and the World Bank. Now, what does other deposits does not include? See, when your government deposits money with the RBI, is does not included in the other deposits when your Countries bank that is that are your commercial bank deposits with the RBI are not included in the other deposits so other deposits does not include deposits of the government of the country with RBI The second we have is deposits of the countries banking system with RBI. Your other deposit, what does it include? Was your public when your public deposit the demand deposit with these commercial banks right second the other deposits in that was your dd now the other deposits includes any deposits with the rbi by the public financial institution by the uh, foreign government or the foreign banks or by the international financial institution like the imf and world bank but what the other deposits does not include any deposit with the rbi made by made by the government of the country or the commercial banks of the country so this was your measurement one we did now we have measurement two with it is a broader concept of the supply of money compared to the m1 your M2 includes everything in M1, that is your M1 plus deposits with post office savings bank account. See, we have uh, understood, we have listened many a times that we have, I have my account in the post office, I deposit the money in the post office account. So that post office account is your post office savings bank account. So any deposit you make in your post office savings bank account, including your currency plus DD plus OD, that is your M1, is your measurement 2. The third we have is the measurement 3. How do you measure the supply of money? Is M3 is equal to M1 plus your net time deposit.
deposits with the commercial bank. See, your M1 includes your currency, your demand deposits and your other deposits. But what about if you give a fixed deposit with the commercial bank? We have heard about the FDs. So, that is also a part of money supply. But that we have taken in the measurement 3 concept. The measurement 3 includes your money M1. That is your currency plus DD plus OD plus your net time deposits with the commercial banks means your fixed deposits. Now the last and the broader concept we have is M4 measurement. Your M4 measurement is equal to the M3 which means your M3 all the components of M3 plus your total deposits with post office except other than your national savings certificate form of national saving certificate Now, what national savings certificates are? See, national savings certificates are also known as your NSCs. These are basically a uh, saving bond certificates that are issued by the government of India through post offices. for a period of 5 to 10 years of maturity what do you do you go to the post office these are beneficial for the tax evasion purposes you go to the post office you buy the national savings certificate for let's say five years for rupees one lakh you pay rupees one lakh to the post office you buy the national savings certificate you will get a national savings certificate in which it is written that you have rupees one lakh deposited with the post office and that money you will get after the five years and on this national savings certificates you get as these are the bonds you get the interest on that so what you can use is you can keep your national savings certificates as collateral in order to uh, take loan if you are going to take loan you can keep this as a collateral or the security because after five years you will get your money back by the post office so this is a government saving certificate that you get which is your national saving certificate so this is not included in the measurement for of the supply of money i hope you have understood the measurement of money supply please download our scholars learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us